And this will make sure that you make a great first impression in front of the officer who is going to review you. If you guys want to download a copy of this sample SOP, then I'll leave a link in the description box below or also in the pinned comment below. So in this paragraph, you need to clearly mention that you intend to return to India or return to your home country after you finish that course. What's up YouTube? It's Shivansh here. Today's video is going to be extremely important for you if you are planning to study in Canada because today we will talk about how to create the perfect SOP for Canada because your SOP is one of the biggest factors in deciding whether your study permit application for Canada will be approved or rejected. In this video, I will give you a basic framework of how to create a great SOP for Canada by giving you a real world example of an SOP that was used recently to get a Canadian study permit application approved. We will discuss every single think in detail with examples so this video is going to be jam-packed with useful information so please make sure to watch this video till the very end so that you don't miss out on any important point but before we begin please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel because this is the only way you can support me and if you guys like and share this video then YouTube will show this video to more number of people and more people will be able to benefit from this information and learn how to create the perfect SOP for Canada so with that being said let's start this video so before I share my screen and show you a real world example of an SOP there are three main points that I want you to remember when you are creating your SOP for Canada the very first thing is that the example SOP that I will share in this video please only use that as an example only use that as a reference don't copy the entire thing just use that as an inspiration to create your own SOP the reason is that every single student is different everyone's educational background work experience and life goals can be very different so it is very important to tailor your SOP based on your background and your aspirations in life because the more real or the more personal your SOP is, the higher your chances will be of getting your Canadian study permit application approved. The second point is when writing your SOP, try to stick to a word limit of 1000 to 1200 words or two to three pages at max. Now, even though there is no exact word limit that the government of Canada expects from you, but two to three pages or 1200 words should be a good enough length and that should be enough for you to describe your story in detail. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that there should not be any grammatical errors in your SOP because that's what makes it very unprofessional. If you are not confident enough, then there is no problem in getting your SOP proofread by someone else who is a lot more well versed in English than you are and this will make sure that you make a great first impression in front of the officer who is going to review your profile. And third and the most important point to remember is that please, please, please don't copy the example SOP that I'll be sharing with you because if you do this, this will count as plagiarism and the government of Canada takes this very seriously and it can also lead to a straight rejection of your study permit application. So do not copy paste this SOP and use this as an inspiration to write about your own story. Alright, so now let's hop into my computer and take a look at a real world example of an SOP so that you can understand the basic structure and the framework that you should follow when writing your SOP for Canada. So this is a sample SOP or statement of purpose for Canada. So a few things that you will notice right off the bat are this SOP is two pages long, uh, so not too long. Um, and if you also want to take a look at the word count, it is 899 words. Uh, so this is actually below the word limit of 1000 to 1200 words. Now this is because this is just a sample SOP and not an actual full fledged, fully detailed statement of purpose. But when you will write your SOP, it should be between 1000 to 1200 words and you have to fill in a lot of the missing pieces of information. Another thing that you will notice is that each section begins with a header of its own. And these headings will actually tell the visa officer that what is the following paragraph about? What are you trying to tell in this paragraph, for example? Now, this is also done so that you don't miss out on any key points that you have to talk about in your SOP. For example, your educational background or your work experience and some other topics that we will talk about later in this video. Another thing to notice is that these paragraphs are not extremely long, nor they are extremely short. So these paragraphs are like five, four to five sentences each and they're well structured and well spaced so that it is very easy for the visa officer to read through each point and make sense of it and move on to the next point without being cluttered with too much information or over information that is presented in a haphazard way. And you should also pay attention to the font size. So for example, all the text in this document has a font size of 9.9 .9 or approximately 10 including the headers which are also of the same font size but they're just bolded. It is very important to keep your font size consistent and also not too huge neither too small so that it is not 
very stressful for the person who's actually reading it uh, and so that they can easily read it and make sense of it. Now, one last thing to notice about the format before we dive into the actual content of the SOP is that a lot of places are actually bolded, for example, full name, your occupation, city, state, country, etc. And all these X marks and also like these months and everything. Now, these are bolded just for you so that you know that these are just placeholders and you can just replace them with the relevant information that pertains to you. But again, I'm saying don't copy this SOP. This is just an example. Modify it based on your personal experience and your professional goals and your personal goals. Also, if you guys want to download a copy of this sample SOP, then I'll leave a link in the description box below or also in the pinned comment below so that you can just click on that link and just go there and enter your email ID and you'll be able to get the sample SOP for free. You should be able to download it and use this as an inspiration or a reference and just write your own SOP based on your experience and that talks about your story. All right, so now let's quickly dive into the content of the SOP. So first of all, uh, we start the SOP by just stating that this is the statement of purpose or the SOP. This is just the header of the document. I think you should put it in so that it is very clear to whoever is reading it what this document is all about. The next thing is the salutation. So you just say respected sir or ma'am. And then uh, you have a short paragraph which talks about who you are. So this is basically your introduction. You will clearly mention your name, your occupation, um, your residence, and what is the purpose of this letter. So as you can see that it says that my name is so-and-so and I have been accepted by whatever the name of your college is for this specific course for September 23 intake or whichever intake you're accepted for. And then what is the purpose of this letter? So you're just outlining the objectives and the reasons for selecting this course and your aspirations post completion of your studies. Um, all this is mentioned in this specific document. And after that, there is a short paragraph briefly talking about your family. So who all are there in your family and if there are any specific uh, achievements that you want to talk about. So for example, in this case, uh, the person is saying that my brother um, is a gold medalist at his medical college and my father is working at so-and-so company and my mother is in so-and-so occupation. So this just gives a basic introduction to your family along with uh, an introduction to yourself. All right, so next let's move on to educational background. Now in this section, as you already know, you will have to talk about your past schooling, your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, if you have it, and all the skills that you have acquired during your studies. For example, in this case, the person has written about grade 10, uh, their GPA, uh, what board, and then uh, what subjects did they have in, uh, in the grade 12, and what did they pursue for their bachelor's, so software engineering or BTEC, and then why, why did they actually choose BTEC uh, for their bachelor's and uh, what all skills did they learn throughout their four years of bachelor's of engineering in software engineering. We end that with the GPA and the date of graduation. Now, once you finish mentioning all your previous educational qualifications, the next thing that you should definitely mention is your IELTS exam result. So if you're coming to study in Canada, most likely you have given your IELTS exam. So this is the place where you should mention when did you give your IELTS exam and how many bands did you score? And you should also give a breakdown of each of those sections. So listening, reading, speaking, and writing. So once you're done with your educational background, you will focus on your work experience. So this is a section where you will talk about all your prior internships and all your work experience up till now. Uh, and for each of the companies that you work for, you should mention where did you actually work? When did you work there? And what did you actually learn in that job? So that's basically what's outlined in this example here. And you need to modify this based on your experience and what all skills did you learn throughout those experiences. All right, so this next part is extremely important. What led me to pursue this specific course? And you need to replace this with the actual course that you are opting to study in Canada. And in this paragraph, you should clearly mention why are you choosing this specific course? Uh, you should start by talking about uh, what your current status is that you've been working for four years, for example, in this case, and uh, the, you feel the dearth of certain skills that you feel are missing in your life and 
that are stopping you from excelling in your professional life or in your career. And then you will talk about how this specific course will solve all those problems for you. And you should clearly mention the exact skills that you will learn through this specific course. And my advice for you will be to actually go to the college's website and read through the description of the program and try to understand what will you be learning in that course now even though you haven't taken that course yet so it is very difficult for you to imagine what all things you will learn but still the course's website will give you a lot of information a huge amount of information that you will be able to put on your sop and convince the visa officer that you have a strong reason to choose this specific course and how this course will actually help you excel in your life and become a better professional so the next important thing to talk about is why do you want to study in Canada in the first place? There are so many countries that you can go to, then why are you choosing Canada out of all the countries in the world? Now I'm sure a lot of you guys already probably know this answer that why are you choosing Canada? So I would say just be honest to yourself, uh, just think about the reasons why you want to move to Canada in the first place and just write all those reasons down here. Now of course don't mention things like oh getting a PR in Canada is very easy or a lot of my friends are in Canada or things like that. As you can see in this example we talk about Canada uh, provides an opportunity to have an extraordinary international experience and a promising future and you can talk about how Canada is a multicultural country and it has people from all the cultures from all over the world and how you will be able to experience all these different cultures by getting to know people from all over the world and then you can also talk about the financial aspects so for example uh, we all know that the tuition fees in Canada is still a lot more affordable as compared to many other countries in the world. So you can talk about that. You can talk about the housing and other living costs, which are much cheaper in Canada as compared to many other countries. And that's why Canada stood out to you. And that's why you chose to study in Canada instead. And then you should also relate that with your profession or with your career. So for example, since this SOP is for someone who is a software engineer. So that's why they say that some of the most prominent tech companies are based out of Canada for example Shopify or Constellation Software, Neo Financial etc. So you should also find examples of some of the best companies in your industry who are doing commendable job in Canada and then you can talk about how you can learn from the professionals who are working in those companies and then of course you should also talk about the quality of education being taught in the schools of Canada and how it is far superior than what you can get back in your home country or in any other country. Now since Canada offers a perfect blend of technology and culture and that's why you chose to study in Canada. Okay, so this brings us to the next important section, which is the reasons for choosing this specific college or university. Now, please don't mention that this is the only college that you got accepted into and that's why you're choosing it. You, instead, you should mention what this college has to offer. Talk about some of the notable alumni in that college who are doing some excellent work. Talk about the reputation of that college or university and also what's so special about the program that you are choosing that is offered by this specific college. And that's exactly what's mentioned in this example. So I did a lot of research and I finally came across Centennial College's XYZ program. And Centennial College was the perfect choice for me because it was the only college that was offering the program that I really wanted to do. And then you should also talk a little bit about the history of the college or what is that college known for. For example, it's exemplary teaching, innovative programming and research. And as I said before, you can also mention some notable alumni and how the connections that you will forge in this college will help you become successful in your industry or in your profession. And if the college or the program offers any specific co-op opportunities or internship opportunities, or if it has an applied research component. And co-op is actually a big reason why a lot of students opt for specific colleges that offer this program so that they can get some actual practical industry experience even before they graduate. All right, so the second last paragraph will be about your career opportunities or your future prospects after finishing that course. Now, this paragraph is also extremely important for the final decision of your study permit application because in this paragraph, you need to clearly mention that you intend to return to India or return to your home country after you finish that course. Please don't mention that you want to live in Canada or work in Canada or stay in Canada after you graduate. And this is because the focus of this SOP and just your intention to study in Canada should just be that you want to gain that international experience. You want to study in a world class college or a university and just improve your skill set and become an even better professional. So you will need to clearly mention the future prospects of doing this course from Canada and then just applying those skills back in your home country. 
You should mention how this international credential or this international exposure will give you an edge over all the other candidates who will be applying for the same jobs back in your home country and what are your career goals after you finish this course and you go back to your home country. So for example, in this case, they've mentioned that they want to set up a tech consulting firm in their home country and these new skills that they will learn in Canada will immensely help them become successful in their professional life back in their home country. Some other things that you can also mention in addition to starting your own business in your home country is mention about your strong family ties. So anything that you can mention that will prove that you have strong ties with your home country. So your parents, grandparents, brothers or sisters, all that will actually prove to be a huge plus for your study permit application in this SOP. All right, so this final paragraph is the conclusion. Now this will basically be your closing statement. And it is very important that you mention that you feel privileged and honored that you got admission into such a prestigious college or university and to get an opportunity to study in Canada and get that international experience that will help you prepare for a prosperous future in the field of software engineering or your profession in your home country. And in the final lines, make sure to thank the visa officer for their time. Uh, because they are taking out time to review your application and making sure that all your documents are in proper order. And finally, you just end your SOP by signing off with your name. Now, in the end, I would like to leave you with the most important piece of advice, in my opinion, and that is that creating your SOP for Canada is a continuous process. You can't just write your SOP in one go and then just be done with it and expect that that's the perfect SOP and that will just get your study permit application approved. You need to spend a lot of time in carefully deciding the stuff that you want to talk about in your SOP, the way you want to frame it and what all things you want to include and exclude. So once you write your SOP, proofread it again so that there are no grammatical errors, there are no errors or mistakes or typos in names of people, names of places. Make sure there are no factual discrepancies. Make sure that if you're writing a date for something for your graduation year or for your work experience, make sure that those dates are actually indeed correct. Make sure to go in as much detail as possible and all of this without crossing the word limit of 1200 words or two to three pages at max. Once you write the first draft of your SOP, don't just stop there. Read it again, figure out the things that you can improve, make those improvements, read it once again, make some more improvements, keep repeating this process again and again until you are fully satisfied with your SOP and until you realize that there are no further improvements that can be made. That's exactly when you would have written the perfect SOP for Canada that would almost guarantee that your study permit application will get approved and will at least make sure that the officer does not have any objections or apprehensions about your intentions of coming to study in Canada. So that's all I have for you guys for today. I hope you guys found this video to be extremely useful. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel because that's what motivates me to create more such videos for you and that's how you can support me and that's how YouTube will show this video to more number of people. If you guys have any questions then feel free to comment below. You can also reach out to me on Instagram at shivansingla119 and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.